Hi and welcome everyone, I'm Gavin Lon. So, it's a very exciting time in the world of .NET. Last month, the official version of .NET 8 was released. You can download .NET 8 from this URL. In this video, I'll provide my 10 reasons that stand out to me why you should adopt .NET 8. These reasons are in no particular order. This video will hopefully provide you with an overview of some of the enhancements and improvements that come with the official release of .NET 8. Please let me know in the comments section what you think of these improvements and enhancements that have been released with .NET 8. I'm not covering all of the new features in .NET 8, so I think it would be excellent if you could include some features that I haven't included in this video in the comments section. I will be including a lot of reference material in this video, so please note that all links to the relevant reference material have been included below in the description of this video. Reason number one, .NET Aspire. What is .NET Aspire? If we navigate to this URL on the Microsoft Learn platform, we can see a clear and concise definition of .NET Aspire. .NET Aspire is an opinionated, cloud-ready stack for building observable, production-ready, distributed applications. Why would you want to use .NET Aspire? It was created to improve the experience of building cloud-native apps. It provides a consistent, opinionated set of tools and patterns that help you build and run distributed apps. .NET Aspire is designed to help you with orchestration. .NET Aspire provides features for running and connecting multi-project applications and their dependencies. Components. .NET Aspire components are NuGet packages for commonly used services, such as Redis or Postgres, with standardized interfaces ensuring they connect consistently and seamlessly with your app. Tooling. .NET Aspire comes with project templates and tooling experiences for Visual Studio and .NET CLI, which help you create and interact with .NET Aspire apps. For more details about .NET Aspire, check out this .NET Conf 2023 video that provides a basic demonstration of some of the features of .NET Aspire. Reason number two. C-Sharp 12 Modern Language Features So there is a continuous push in the evolution of C-Sharp where facilities are provided to C-Sharp developers where you can write less code while at the same time leverage greater power. In C-Sharp version 12, there are many language enhancements and improvements like for example, primary constructors. With primary constructors, you can include parameters in the actual definition of a class or struct. You can, for example, create a parameterless constructor in the relevant class, but you must always initialize the primary constructor. For details on primary constructors, please navigate to this URL. Collection expressions. Collection expressions introduce a new terse syntax to create common collection values. Inlining other collections into these values is possible using a spread operator. Beginning with c 12, you can provide default values for parameters on Lambda expressions. The syntax and the restrictions on default parameter values are the same as for methods and local functions. The following example declares a Lambda expression with a default parameter, then calls it once using the default and once using two explicit parameters. Please check out more detail on new language features included with c 12 at this URL. And you can see here, alias, any type, inline arrays, interceptors, and more. c -sharp is continuously evolving as a language, which means less code and greater power for c -sharp developers. For more information about new features included in c -sharp version 12, please check out this .NET Conf 2023 video at this location. Reason number three, Blazor. I should have included Blazor under general ASP.NET Core improvements and enhancements, which is also one of my 10 reasons to adopt .NET 8. But because I'm so impressed with the way Blazor is evolving, I want to include Blazor as a reason on its own. With the release of .NET 8, you can now include new .NET 8 features like server-side rendering and streaming rendering with the features in Blazor that existed prior to .NET 8, like Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server. 
and you can, with the release of .NET 8, include all of these features within one project. In order to do this, you can start your Blazor project by choosing the Blazor Web App Project template. So this gives Blazor developers massive flexibility when choosing render modes for Razor components. There's even an auto render mode. Let's go to Microsoft Learn here at this location and read about the different modes that can be used from within one Blazor project. With the release of .NET 8, Blazor is a full stack web UI framework for developing apps that render content at either the component or page level with static server rendering, also called static server-side rendering, static SSR, to generate static HTML on the server. Interactive server rendering, also called interactive server-side rendering, interactive SSR, to generate interactive components with pre-rendering on the server. Interactive WebAssembly rendering, also called client-side rendering, CSR, which always assumed to be interactive, to generate interactive components on the client with pre-rendering on the server. Interactive auto, automatic rendering, to initially use the server-side ASP.NET Core runtime for content rendering and interactivity. The .NET WebAssembly runtime on the client is used for subsequent rendering and interactivity after the Blazor bundle is downloaded and the WebAssembly runtime activates. Auto-rendering usually provides the fastest app startup experience. Number four, enhanced performance. For details on enhanced performance in .NET 8, please navigate to this URL. So when it comes to a comprehensive explanation of the performance enhancements in .NET 8, we will inevitably be dragged low down into the depths of .NET, where all the wonderful details can be found. But we are not going to do that in this video. We are only interested in the fact that our code is going to run much faster and more efficiently. If you want to delve into the details, please check out this article here. In this video, I'm just going to hone in on JIT. JIT. Code generation permeates every single line of code we write, and it's critical to the end-to-end -end performance of applications that the compiler doing that code generation achieves high code quality. In .NET, that's the job of the just-in-time compiler, or JIT compiler, which is used both just-in-time as an application executes, as well as ahead-of-time, AOT, scenarios as the workhorse to perform the code gen at build time. Every release of .NET has seen significant improvements in the JIT, and .NET 8 is no exception. In fact, I dare say, the improvements in .NET 8 in the JIT are an incredible leap beyond what was achieved in the past, in large part due to dynamic PGO. And you can read the rest of the article right here for the delicious detail on the low-level performance improvements in .NET 8. We have just cheekily picked all the sweet icing off the top of the cake. But if you want to eat the entire cake, you can read the full article right here. Reason number five, ASP.NET Core Improvements. If we navigate to this URL, you can see that Blazor is listed among other items related to ASP.NET Core version eight. We have already covered Blazor, so let's look at some of the other ASP.NET Core improvements. Signal R. With Signal R is included a new approach to set the server timeout and keep alive interval. Minimal APIs. Explicit binding to form values using the from form attribute is now supported. Reason number six, Core.NET libraries improvements. Serialization. Many improvements have been made to system.text.json serialization and deserialization. Please read further about this at this URL. Data validation. The system.componentmodel.data annotations namespace includes new data validation attributes intended for validation scenarios in cloud native services. While the pre existing data annotations validators are geared towards typical UI data entry validation, such as fields on a form, the new attributes are designed to validate non-user entry data, such as configuration options. Performance-focused types. Stream-based zip file methods. 
.NET 8 includes new overloads for zip file .create from directory that allow you to collect all the files included in a directory and zip them, then store the resulting zip file into the provided stream. Similarly, new zip file .extract to directory overloads let you provide a stream containing a zip file and extract its contents into the file system. .NET 8 introduces several new types aimed at improving app performance. There are many more core .NET library improvements. For details about these improvements, please navigate to this URL. Reason number seven, .NET MAUI. .NET multi-platform app UI, .NET MAUI, is a cross-platform framework for creating native mobile and desktop apps with C Sharp and XAML. Using .NET MAUI, you can develop apps that can run on Android, iOS, macOS, and Windows from a single shared code base. For a detailed explanation of the new improvements and enhancements of .NET MAUI on .NET 8, please check out this blog post. In this article, the overall quality improvements are discussed, which include keyboard behavior, especially on mobile, flow direction support for right-to-left languages, layout fidelity and performance, scroll performance, memory management. And this article provides plenty of details surrounding the relevant .NET MAUI improvements that come with .NET 8. Please also check out this .NET Conf 2023 video on what's new with .NET MAUI. Reason number eight, native AOT support. The option to publish as native AOT was first introduced in .NET 7. Publishing an app with native AOT creates a fully self-contained version of your app that doesn't need a runtime. Everything is included in a single file. .NET 8 brings the following improvements to native AOT publishing. Add support for the x64 and ARM64 architectures on macOS. Reduces the sizes of native AOT apps on Linux by up to 50%. The following table shows the size of a Hello World app published with native AOT that includes the entire .NET runtime on .NET 7 versus .NET 8. So you can see there is a significant size reduction for AOT applications on .NET 8. Let's you specify an optimization preference, size or speed. By default, the compiler chooses to generate fast code while being mindful of the size of the application. However, you can use optimization preference MS build property to optimize specifically for one or the other. Reason number nine. Simplify auth and identity endpoints and token support. ASP.NET Core 8 adds new features to authentication and authorization. Identity API endpoints. Map Identity API, in angle brackets T user, is a new extension method that adds two API endpoints, forward slash register and forward slash login. The main goal of the Map Identity API is to make it easy for developers to use ASP.NET Core Identity for authentication in JavaScript-based single-page apps, SPA, or Blazor apps. Instead of using the default UI provided by ASP.NET Core Identity, which is based on Razor pages, Map Identity API adds JSON API endpoints that are more suitable for SPA apps and non-browser apps. So for more information, please navigate to this URL. Reason number 10, .NET SDK enhancements. With .NET 8 come several new features. For example, with the .NET workload clean command, runs workload garbage collection for file-based or MSI-based workloads, which cleans up orphaned packs. Orphaned packs are from uninstalled versions of the .NET SDK or packs where installation records for the pack no longer exist. If Visual Studio is installed, the command also lists any workloads that you should clean up manually using Visual Studio. .NET Publish and .NET Pack Assets Since the .NET Publish and .NET Pack commands are intended to produce production assets, they now produce release assets by default. For more detail on these .NET 8 SDK enhancements, please navigate to this URL. So this video is certainly not a deep dive into all the details involved in the improvements and enhancements that have been released with .NET 8, 
but I hope it gives you at least a basic insight into how Microsoft is significantly improving .NET with each release. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this through my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will of course be greatly appreciated. I love reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. I've recently joined X, formerly Twitter, so it would be great if you followed me on X. My username is at Gavin Lon Digital. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care.